Hello again, this is John Jamison, author of the Perpetual Wealth System. Today I want to talk about your 401k. Most of you guys have one. Most of you guys, if you have a current one or you have an old one, it's the biggest savings vehicle for the average American. And I'm here to tell you it is 100% massively flawed and I don't think you should be a part of it. I'm going to tell you how it works. I'm going to show you the goods and the bads and you decide. All right, so this is your 401k. Now all of them are set up a little bit differently because it will depend on the administrator, it will depend on your company, it will depend on all kinds of things, but generally how it works is this. They will take a certain amount of money out of your paycheck automatically and they're going to put it inside the 401k and then they're going to take that 401k money, usually your employer who's ever handling the account for the employer, and they're going to turn it over to a money manager and they're going to put it inside mutual funds. Okay? So your money comes out of your check, goes over to mutual funds and it's in the stock market. Now you can put it in other things, but vast majority, the vast, vast majority, it's in mutual funds. All right? So Wall Street loves that because whether you make or lose money, they're making money because there's boatloads of fees, money transactions, all kinds of things inside those accounts. All right, now, well, let's look at it from your perspective. You took money out of your check. Let's just say you did that to the tune of, I don't know, let's see, keep it easy, $5,000 a year. Now you do get to take a $5,000 tax deduction. And a lot of people think, well, boy, I'm saving money in taxes. That's great. Well, you're not really saving money in taxes because understand how the tax system works. All you're doing when you take a tax deduction for money you're putting inside your 401k is you're agreeing to defer the tax on it. Okay? So you're not going to pay tax today. You're going to pay tax tomorrow. Now, the reasoning is, well, when you go to retire, you, the rates are going to be lower, so you'll pay less money. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know what the rates are going to be when we go to retire. And I'll ask my clients all the time, hey, do you think taxes are going to be higher or lower in the next 20 years? 99% of them think they're going to be higher. So when I ask them, okay, if you truly believe they're going to be higher, why are you agreeing to defer your tax at what you think is going to be a lower amount today to later on down the road when you think the rate's going to be higher, why are you agreeing to do that? And they'll look at me. Some of them might say, well, yeah, but I'm going to be making, I'll be in a lower tax bracket because I'll be making less money. The answer is, we don't know if you're going to be in a lower tax bracket. Will you be making less money? I hope not. I'm not making less money. I want to always make more money. And I don't know what those tax rates are going to be. I don't know what Uncle Sam is going to put them at. So that's a big unknown. So for me, I would rather pay the tax today. I'd minimize that tax as much as I possibly could with legal tax deductions and tax structures. But whatever tax needs to be paid, I'd rather pay it today and get it out of the way because I'm going to pay, I think, a lower amount, a lower rate on less money. Because as that money gets put in every year, and let's just say it does grow a little bit over time, and it grows to $200,000, a lot of people, they tell me, well, I've got $200,000 in my 401k, and I'll tell them, well, no, you really don't. Because remember, that money hasn't been taxed yet. The income wasn't taxed, nor any profit hasn't been taxed. So I don't know what the rates are going to be, but let's just say they're dirt low, they're 10%. Right? Now here, you were going to pay 30%. But here you're going to pay 10%. But see, it's 30% of a much smaller number. Now there's other people that will debate me and say, yeah, but you're, you're keeping more money in to compound, so you're better off doing it this way because you'll have more money to grow. That makes a big assumption. It assumes that that money is going to grow every year. And when you understand through my book and through these other trainings what an average rate of return is, you understand that, that the guarantee of that money growing is not guaranteed, certainly not in mutual funds. It can be put in programs that the, that the growth is guaranteed, but for what most of you guys are in, it's not guaranteed. So we can have a debate on that all day long, but this number is bigger than this number. And on top of all that, even if it might be advantageous tax-wise, which I don't think that it is, but if, if you think it is, that's okay. But understand what you're doing. You're giving up control of your money, and you're putting it inside a vehicle that Uncle Sam has 100% control over. They call these qualified plans, so your 401Ks, IRAs, SEPs, Roths, all that stuff is a qualified plan. Who qualifies it? Your friendly Uncle Sam qualifies it. And Sam can change those um, criteria anytime he wants. And they are going to do it. They've already done it. And they're going to do it just like they've done with Social Security. Right now, if you have money in those kind of accounts and you withdraw it before you're 59 and a half, you're going to pay a 10% penalty. Look for that penalty to go strongly up because they don't want you taking the money out. There's over $10 trillion in qualified plans in your uncle. He wants it. He wants as much as he can get, and he wants to, for you to leave it in there. So he's going to penalize you more. Also, he's going to raise the age, just like in Social Security, where you're going to pay a penalty. So right now it's 59 and a half.
that can change dramatically to talk to 63, 64 years old. So if you want to access it before then, you want to withdraw it out, you're going to pay a penalty. Higher penalty at a higher age. And right now, if you're in a 401k, there's what we call required minimum distributions, which currently at about 70 and a half, you have to start withdrawing that money out and now start paying the tax on it. They want to lower that rate as well. So they want you to start taking that money out when you're 67, 68. There's talk of that. Right now, those are the rules. Uncle Sam changes those rules anytime he sees fit. And it's never in your best interest. It's in his best interest. So this is the way 401k works. If you say you've got $200,000 in there, Realistically, a real tax rate is going to be 30% at that point. Okay, so guess what? You don't have 200 grand. You've got 100 to 130 grand. That's a big difference. Where if you paid the tax and got it out of the way and actually put it in a vehicle that actually did grow and compound every year, and you could access it tax-free at the end, you're far better off. That's what a Roth account does. Um, but a Roth is just like anything else, where it's a qualified plan. The products we put people in are not qualified plans. All right now. That's the bad news. The good news is if you have a bunch of money already in one of those and you want to grow and protect it as much as you can because the deed's already been done, think of it. You didn't get into that position overnight. You're not going to get out of it overnight. We do have programs that you can roll that over inside of products that are considered qualified that will grow and compound and provide you lifelong income. We have that available to you. But this is the way a standard 401k works. All right? Look at our video on dollar cost averaging and reverse dollar cost averaging so I can prove to you that this, your, uh, your uh, 401k and mutual funds are an absolute atrocious place to retire out of.